There are many people dying of starvation, many children dying from malnutrition. Imagine a world where Africa can leverage artificial intelligence to alleviate starvation and malnutrition. Artificial intelligence is defined as a technology that aims to use large data sets with suitable computing power for that machine to be able to analyze those data sets and come up with the results of the machine being able to perform human tasks. After this talk is finished and you go out there in your daily lives, if somebody asks you what is artificial intelligence, you can tell them that it is the ability of a machine to perform human tasks. In our generation, the most valuable commodity is data. There are leading artificial intelligence companies around the world who are investing heavily in Africa. The reason is that artificial intelligence contributes positively to food security, among other things. Africa has been contributing to artificial intelligence for thousands of years. The only missing piece was the technology element that exists today. So, how does Africa contribute to artificial intelligence in food security? My name is Okeletang Mokeleti. I'm an attorney by profession and have been for 14 years. I am researching on the role of artificial intelligence in food security. On a basic level, satellite technology has been contributing positively to food security. Satellites sit in various orbits. Satellites sit in, amongst others, lower Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit, and sun-synchronous orbit. What happens is that when the satellite is up there and the Earth is rotating on its axis, satellites take images of Africa every 360 degrees. And these images go to a ground station on Earth and some really intelligent engineers receive these images, put them together like a puzzle piece, so thereby analyzing the data sets. And at the end, we get the results of spatial landmass, we get the results of soil quality, and we get the results of weather and climate patterns. All this information helps us to be able to make a decision of to plant, or not to plant, where to plant, and when to plant. The example of food security that springs to mind is that of the Khoisan people. The Khoisan's people's survival relies on large data sets. In order for them to, to survive, they need to hunt. That skill to hunt started with the collecting of what we call raw data metadata and how to hunt, then that metadata is used to improve the kizo, the knowledge. Kizo is a Setswana word that means knowledge, but more than that, it means the very understanding of that knowledge. There's no point in knowing how to hunt without understanding how to hunt. Because if you don't understand how to hunt, you will not be able to adjust to the circumstances. The Khoisan had to understand hunting in order to eat. To understand, they would have had to collect data over long periods of time. You could be thinking, how do they collect that data? Well, that data comes from their great-grandparents, who transferred the data to their grandparents, who transferred the data to their parents, who transferred the data to them. And they analyzed the data to make a decision as to whether or not to hunt in that area, for example, because the animals could have moved. The question about whether or not a machine has the ability to think dates back decades 
or so it is written. The thinking of a machine is based on feeding information to that machine. The more information you feed it, the more it remembers. The more it remembers, the cleverer it becomes. Eventually, that machine uses the information that you fed it to come up with more results to remember without you prompting it. The neural connections that help that machine to think are called algorithms. Remember, we're still talking about the Afrocentric algorithm. The Dogon tribe of Mali has had astrological knowledge for thousands of years, as opposed to the decades I've just alluded to. The race for space exploration, which has a heavy dependency on artificial intelligence, started in the 1940s. Africa has had knowledge about space for thousands of years. Like the evolution of a toddler, the tribe would have had to start to learn about astrology on a basic level, collecting raw data. Thereafter, use that metadata with that kito, that knowledge, to learn more about celestial data, celestial bodies. Then they collect the data sets and analyze them to come up with further, more refined data sets, and so the advancement of space exploration. The kito they have around celestial bodies allowed them to know when it is prudent to cultivate and when it is foolish to do to do so. We call that, in today's terms, machine learning. Instead of them using machines to collect this data, they used what they had to record this information: carvings, writings, drawings, storytelling, passing the information from generation to generation. Instead of machine learning, they had human learning. Using physical, the physical neural networks, the good old brain. There is nothing primitive about Afri the African way of life. There is nothing primitive about the African way of life. It has been working for thousands of years. Nowadays, we're all informed that when you search certain topics on the internet. You start getting information about that subject matter that you've been researching. Artificial intelligence. Come to think of it, you create your own artificial intelligence when you tell your device, be it your cell phone or your laptop, things that you are researching. For example, food security. Now that you have taught your device the things that you like to look for, it remembers and it goes the extra mile for you by looking for similar sites to what you previously searched. Pretty intelligent and creepy. This is called big data. Artificial intelligence can be a friend or a foe, depending on how and why you want to use it. It took our forefathers thousands of years to gather this data, to analyze it, and to use it. But with artificial intelligence, this can happen in minutes. With this in mind, we have the ability to use artificial intelligence to contribute positively to food security. With the power of artificial intelligence, we can aggressively fight starvation and malnutrition. The right to create computer systems comes with the responsibility of respecting the rights that exist currently: the right to food, the right to shelter, and the right to security. There can be a coexistence between man and machine if we understand the basics of why these machines were made to begin with. Ultimately, to make our lives easier and not to take over our lives, we must maintain dominion over the artificial intelligence that over the human intelligence that created the artificial intelligence. The Afrocentricity of the artificial intelligence algorithm lies in the neural paths of us as humans, passing down the information. From generation to generation, thereby we can intelligently use artificial intelligence to adapt to our immediate realities and navigate any challenges.